Greetings. Uh, let us learn about the anatomy of pancreas. So before we go there, let us recap the anatomy related to the pancreas first. And what we have learned is this is the esophagus, stomach, duodenum, and jejunum. And the demarcation between the duodenum and jejunum is known as duodeno jejunal flexure. Duodenum starts after the pylorus. So this is the duodenum. It, is, it has the shape of a C loop and it has different sections. The first section after the pylorus is known as duodenal bulb or D1. The next section that goes down is the descending duodenum or D2. Then the one that goes across the abdomen transversely is known as transverse duodenum or D3 and finally it goes up before it joins the jejunum that is the ascending duodenum or D4. So these are the different regions of the duodenum D1, D2, D3, D4 and this C loop of the duodenum is closely related to the pancreas. The pancreas lies snugly in that C loop of the duodenum. And the uh, majority of the pancreas, especially the body and tail, are behind the stomach. And when you remove the stomach or expose the, remove the stomach up, and you can expose the remaining portion of the pancreas going up across the body and the tail. So what are the different parts of the pancreas? The one that is enclosed in the C loop is known as the head of pancreas. Then there is neck, body and tail. In addition, there is a small segment of the pancreas that is known as the uncinate process that is closely related to the D3 and D4 sections of the duodenum. So, now let us look at the complex structure of the pancreas. It has a lot of uh, uh, tubes related to the pancreas, otherwise known as the ducts. Uh, and let us look at the ducts first, and then we will review the blood supply are the vessels in relation to the pancreas. So let us look at the ducts. Uh, the bile from the liver comes down via the common hepatic duct and after the cystic duct joins it forms the common bile duct which enters through the head of the pancreas and joins the pancreatic duct at the sphincter of OD or the common channel. The sphincter of OD is the muscle that allows the bile and the pancreatic juice to come out after having a meal. And the sphincter of OD opens into the major ampulla. We've learned about major ampulla and minor ampulla. So the pancreatic juice comes down the main pancreatic duct and the bile comes down the common bile duct. After a meal, the bile and the pancreatic juice come out through the major ampulla. So, the bile coming down, pancreatic juice coming down, they come down to the common channel and open into or drain into the duodenum via the major ampulla. Majority of the pancreatic juice enters the duodenum through the major ampulla. A little bit comes out through the minor ampulla 
and enters the Duvarnam. So we have learnt about the ducts in relation to the pancreas, common bile duct, main pancreatic duct, opening into the major ampulla, accessory pancreatic duct, opening through the minor ampulla. Now, the main pancreatic duct basically drains the pancreatic enzymes. Enzymes are important for digestion of protein, fat, and carbohydrates. Next, let's look at the blood vessels. So now we add the blood vessels here, and we want to learn the relationship of all these blood vessels in relation to the anatomy of the pancreas, the head, the neck, the body, and the tail. So let us spend time on looking at the major blood vessels, especially draining the pancreas. So we start with the spleen. The spleen drains into the splenic vein that uh, curses along the superior aspect, the top aspect of the tail and body of the pancreas and joins the superior mesenteric vein that drains the small intestine and right-sided section of the colon and they join at the top of the neck of the pancreas to form the portal vein which goes into the liver. So this is the venous anatomy related to the pancreas. Next, let us look at the uh, blood vessels, the arteries. Here is the big blood vessel that is coming out of the heart uh, that supplies the entire body, known as the aorta. And the first major vessel that comes out of the aorta in the abdomen is known as the celiac trunk. Celiac trunk gives out two big, big blood vessels, one to the left side, to the spleen, otherwise known as the splenic artery, and the next one to the right side, that is the hepatic artery. A little bit down uh, from the celiac trunk, the aorta gives out superior mesenteric artery that supplies the small intestine and the right side of the colon. So let us look at the arterial supply of the pancreas. As you can see here, a majority of the blood, blood supply comes from the celiac trunk, either from the hepatic artery branches or the splenic artery branches and the superior mesenteric artery branches. So celiac artery gives out the gastroduodenal artery, which in turn gives out the superior anterior pancreatic or duodenal artery and superior posterior pancreatic or duodenal artery. And the superior mesenteric artery gives out the inferior pancreatic or duodenal artery. And this, these uh, three blood vessels, the pancreatic or duodenal arteries, supply the head of the pancreas and portions of the neck of the pancreas and uncinate process. The splenic artery gives out branches to supply the body and tail of the pancreas. So now look at uh, what is the main function of pancreas. Pancreas is a gland that secretes enzymes or otherwise known as exocrine function of the gland and the enzymes help in the digestion of protein, fat, and carbohydrates. In addition, the pancreas is important to control the blood sugars by releasing hormones. And the most important hormones are, as you know, insulin, glucagon, and a bunch of other hormones. So let us look at uh, how do the exocrine function of the pancreatic gland uh, works out. Uh, the gland has uh, the pancreas gland has SNR cells. They secrete the enzymes, and the enzymes uh, come out 
of the pancreatic duct, as we have seen, and enter the duodenum when we eat a meal. And pancreas is the most important organ for digesting majority of what we eat. If you eat a Big Mac uh, that has a lot of uh, protein, fat, and carbohydrate, pancreas helps to digest uh, all those different components uh, by the help of the different types of enzymes that the pancreatic gland secretes. Uh, and uh, as you eat, uh, the blood sugars go up, and uh, the blood sugar control is by the endocrine function of the pancreas, uh, the islet cells, uh, which secrete uh, hormones that enter into the bloodstream. These hormones are insulin and glucagon, and majority of the insulin and glucagon secreting cells, or islet cells, are located in the tail and the body of the pancreas, and they enter the liver via the splenic vein up uh, to the liver. And they're ready, when you eat a big meal, to help maintain the glucose levels in the body. I hope this is useful. Thank you.